What do you think has kept mainstream eyes off of you as a solo artist to so far? Um, I think it's uh my media presence, you know, as far as like uh, you know, the social outlet, the uh social media outlets mm -hmm. hasn't been as strong as it could have been. You know what okay. I'm saying? And then, you know, like um, you know, I'm doing this without a cosign, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing this, you know, uh by myself with my team. Mm -hmm. You know, with the helps of Jay Barber, you know, we got a label, you know, Glow three sixty five. And you know, I mean it's just a it's just a different kind of grind. You know, but now we're learning, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, we're learning now, like, okay, maybe we should move like this and do this, or whatever. So the next project is definitely going to be iller than the last, and the know-how is going to be there as well to, to make sure that it gets out there to the, to the people. But as far as, like, I mean, when you say mainstream, like, I mean, it's crazy because, I mean, I get love from all types of people from, you know, J. Cole and, mm -hmm. you know, Dr. Dre. Like, you know what I'm saying? I get love from, from mainstream artists who know me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Drake and all that. It's just like I'm just not on the radio like that. So it may seem that way. Are you, are you looking to do that? I mean, because there are certain artists who go out of their way to make a radio record. Right, right, right. You know? Uh, I just never was like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I appreciated people who, um, I appreciated groups like Outkast. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Who who stayed true to what they did and was still able, able to put out records that could be played on the radio. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to, like, just do a record for the sake of being on the radio. No disrespect for the, to the people who do it, but that's just not my style like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of groups and, uh, Groups that did it their own way. Yeah. We, we just recently lost a, a legend in, in the hip hop community. Yeah, uh, with Fife passing. Yeah, rest in peace, um, Fife. Absolutely. Yes. We, we've 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 always seen the influence of Tribe mm -hmm. in different groups, mm -hmm. uh, and definitely Slum was no mm -hmm. was no exception to that. You know, the the, the vibe was similar and. The, the feeling of it was always similar and, and not, not in a copycatting way, mm -hmm. but just that lane got a little bit wider when slum got in there and started doing their thing. And, and, you know, you had uh souls of mischief out mm -hmm. West, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it just, the lane just seemed to open up off the strength of tribe getting started and blazing the trail. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts when you, when you heard about five passing? Oh man. Like, uh, that's one of my favorite hip hop groups. You know what I'm saying? Like one of, Man, I can't decide which album I put in my top five, like, from them. It's like, mm. is it is it Low End Theory or is it Midnight Marauders? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, Fife and, and Tip had a huge influence on me and in my ear. You know mm. what I'm saying? Because I love, like, I love that, that, that beautiful, the beautiful chords or, like, the beautiful samples or, like, that they use in their music. Like, that's mm. my thing. And I feel like Dilla took it took a, a step further and added the the, the rough bass lines and mm -hmm. but he but the tops always reminded me of tribe you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying like i mean i hear tribe and in, in, in uh in pharrell music you know neptunes i hear mm -hmm. I, and then in some ways i hear it in tyler, tyler the creator's music so mm -hmm. i feel like they you know they the music lives on man but yeah like like when i heard that it hurt me man because you know i was one of my heroes coming up mm -hmm. yeah that really sucks. I'll tell you, oh, like man. being from Queens, For real. catching that news. I'll tell you what I told uh, told my interview yesterday. Fife's voice has been in the background of my life so long. Mm. When he passed, it felt like I lost a cousin. Man, like and it's I, been... I legit got a call from my older sister, like, "Yo, did you hear what happened?" We're talking like yeah. he's family. You know, we're yeah. we're all from Queens, so when we heard. We, Nah, get out of here! Like, nah, just you're kidding me. You know, it was it was that kind of thing. Yeah, man, I, I I was blessed to actually go on my first tour with Fife. Um, you know, when I first got in the Slum Village, mm -hmm. uh, the first tour that I ever was on, uh, Fife was on the road with us, so I got a chance to connect with him. And man, he was mad cool dude. And, and throughout the years, I run into him every so often. Mm -hmm. Mad humble cat, man skillful too you know what i'm saying like if we talking in terms of music like 
you know, he, he always brought it on the track. And, yeah, his mm-hmm. influence is, uh, you know, it spread it out across the board, man. And he's going to be missed, for real. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, man. We, we're going too soon, like, between oh, him man. and Dilla and, mm-hmm. and Proof. And, you know, by 10, it feels like there's a lot of unfinished work mm-hmm. that needed to be done before those brothers left out of here. We got to start taking better care of ourselves, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and just... uh. Uh, we're, we're getting off on another tangent, but I think you see where I'm going. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so how many people do you scare away, <laughs> especially artists? How many rappers have you scared away? Like when it comes time to get on a track with you, I've only I've only heard a handful of dudes do it. Um, Royce and Black, as a matter of fact, you did the Black Milk track mm. with, with those two dudes, and you even anchored that. Is it? Do, do you think? Sometimes being this nice works against you when it comes time to collab <laughs> with somebody who, you know, may be beneficial to you. They don't want to get shown up on, on the track by you. I mean, that's hard for me to say, man. I mean, you know, I don't really know. Like, the grin kind of says it all. You I mean, I'm just, I'm, no, this, no, right? but I'm saying it's hard. It's, it's like, it could be anything. Because, I mean, it's, it's it's been times that I was supposed to get on a record. It's been times that, uh, you know, people hit me up like, yo, man, I want you to get on this joint and it never happened. Or... Um, or they'll send a joint and then I put my verse on it and it never happens. I mean, it could be anything, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, but, um, I guess it's hard for me to say, man. It's hard for me to say. I okay. appreciate everybody though, you know? Here's another one. Uh, your, your fellow Detroit homie Royce, mm-hmm. um, he, he's been on record as a, addressing the, the whole Drake situation as far as him having a ghostwriter. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you my opinion, it, 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 which is kind of shared. There's an asterisk next to your career if you have a ghostwriter. If if as a lyricist, you can't it's hard to claim goat status. Right, right, right. If you're not writing, if it's not 100% that you've written all your own stuff. Mm-hmm. So as a writer, how do you feel about that? I I would agree. Like if you didn't write your own rhymes, then you can't really like uh claim that title mm-hmm. or or call yourself a lyricist cuz you didn't write the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Um, it's having a go. Do I look at that as a bad thing? Not really. I mean, as far as like when you know, when I think about Dr. Dre and I think right. about uh, you know, Puff. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they've made music that I enjoy, mm-hmm. and they didn't write it. The music was still great. Yeah, it still was great. But I'm saying, like, if you didn't write the lyrics, how can you be a lyricist? Dre and Puff never claimed. Yeah, yeah, lyricist. they never. Yeah, nah, nah. They'll tell you in a minute that this is not what I, you know. Right, the word right. If I right. write rhymes, I write checks. Right, right. It's and, one of Diddy's big lines. And I mean, you know, with the Drake thing, I'm not, I'm not sure if I even understand that, or uh, I don't even really know the ins and outs to that. So I don't even know if he really does have a ghostwriter or whatever. So I don't know. What's acceptable to get? The, the argument seems to. The argument went around for a little bit as far as what's acceptable to get help with and what's not in in your point of view when it comes time to writing a song because a lot of songs can be collaborative efforts a lot Mm -hmm. of people have you know groups of people in the studio people are throwing ideas what's acceptable to get and what's not as far as you're concerned um i think it's acceptable like if like if you're in the studio with your peoples or whatever and uh and they hear you deliver a certain part of your verse Mm -hmm. and and they heard how it fell on the track, and they thought that you could have said it better. Okay. And they like, okay, you should say it more like this, though, because it fall better like this. Mm-hmm. I think that's acceptable. Okay. You know, or if they like, you know, maybe you should take the like out. Like, if you're trying to do a metaphor, simply, okay. and you take the like out of that and, and freak it a little different. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's acceptable. I mean, for me personally, you right. know what I'm saying? Because I, I wouldn't want nobody to just... I wouldn't want nobody to write a line out for me or like or like give me a punchline. Like mm-hmm. that for me, that's I, I that ain't where I that's that ain't far. That ain't that ain't how I came up. You know what I'm saying? Like I always came up doing what I did and perfecting my craft the way I know how. Like I've never had nobody, you know, throw me any lines and I don't I don't I'm not comfortable with that. If they gave artist. you a bridge, 
a bridge. If they gave you a bridge to a song, would that be cool? Uh, you know, as as far as like a, a piece, a piece of the chorus or something, like a bridge. Yeah. With, with, or, uh, or even, uh, let's it, just let's just, a hook. If they if they wrote the well, hook for the track. Well, yeah, a hook is different, I guess. I mean, when I approach a hook, I don't approach it the same way. When as far as like you know, writing a verse, like a hook has to be catchy or you know. A, much more simplistic than a verse would. Okay. So I mean, you know, hooks. I mean, I think that's cool. The hook ain't bad. So a hook, a bridge, yeah. maybe a slight flow suggestion. Yeah, I never, I never got a. I may, I, I'm they. Yeah, we might have been in the studio and maybe they'd have brought up like different flows or whatever. And I guess that's cool. But I mean, it's ultimately linked, like what I'm feeling, like whatever the beat say, mm -hmm. you know, like what the beat is telling me to do, that's what I'm going to go and do. Right. Yeah. I don't want to work against it. Right. Yeah. So you're cool with getting a hook, cool with getting a bridge, mm. maybe a suggestion here and there, but can't nobody write out a line. Nah, a line is too far nah, over. That's way too far for me. Reference tracks, you, you can't. Nah, nah, nah. Can't I can't do that. do that. No disrespect to the people who do it, but not for me. Okay, now originality has come up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are people out here who sound like other people, and there seems to be some confusion between influence and biting. Mm. And coming from the class you came, I wanted to get your opinion on that. It, it, what's the Elzai difference between being influenced by somebody and just biting somebody? Mm. Um. If you, if you don't care how, like, I don't know, like, cause everybody, you know, like you got somebody like Action Bronson who naturally sounds like, you know, a ghost face, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a whole different thing. You know, if he naturally sounds that way, then that's just what that is. Right. But uh, if you got people who tries to sound like somebody else, like tries to do their voice that way and mm -hmm. they flow and you kind of biting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I know about the influence. Like, when we all come up, like, we are influenced. Because I'm, I'm influenced by Slick Rick. You know, I'm influenced okay. by, you know, Cool G Rap, or Rakim, Nas. Like, I'm influenced by all these people. But, and then, when you find yourself as an MC, like, you start, it, you, start you know, the stuff that you've learned along the way. Yeah, you learn that stuff. But you you learn how to do it in your own way, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and carry on a tradition. But if you just purposely trying to do what the next man is doing mm -hmm. over the same beat that that person would have picked, or the same, yeah, okay, and 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 you know you're you're doing the same rhythm and your your voice sounds the same. I, that's bite. Same same ad libs and yeah 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 and, and you and you don't naturally talk that way and that's not naturally your voice and you change it up you you biting. Why do you think biting is so accepted nowadays? It's the times has changed. I mean, it's just a new era. You know what I'm saying? That's, I mean, a lot of the golden rules of hip hop is kind of like fell to the wayside. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you know a lot of big corporations came into it, and then other people came in showing you how to get this money. Mm -hmm. um, I just think they just kind of fell in the background and the newer generation never even heard of what those rules were. You know mm. what I'm saying? And so I think that's why it's accepted. You still live by them? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got to. I, I feel like I got to carry on the tradition. Is if I'm going to do this music, man, I got I to gotta make sure that, I, you know, I make my people proud, the people that influence me and the people that – you know, brought the whole, you know, hip the hip hop and the culture to life. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I feel like I that's that's my duty. If I it's almost like I it's almost like a oath to take. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like when you get into this and you if you really into it as far as like the music, then you, you wanna, you know, you wanna carry tradition, man. You wanna influence somebody, maybe influence somebody to take it further than you did or to keep to keep that that fine balance in the game where you mm -hmm. got lyricists you know, as well as radio music.